While Bruce Wayne was attending the opera with Selena Kyle and his childhood friend Thomas Elliot, the performance was abruptly interrupted by Harley Quinn. She gleefully declared her plan to rob the wealthy audience, reveling in the thrill of targeting the rich and famous. Starting with Bruce and Selena, she took their valuables before moving on to Thomas, stealing a necklace that Bruce recognized as a cherished keepsake from Thomas's late mother. Knowing its deep sentimental value, Thomas tried to chase after Harley. Meanwhile, Bruce discreetly slipped away and returned as Batman. He swiftly disarmed Harley's armed henchmen and confronted her in a fierce battle. At one point, Harley managed to immobilize Batman and was about to shoot him at point-blank range, but Catwoman arrived just in time to stop her. In the ensuing struggle, Harley shot Catwoman in the shoulder and fled. Fortunately, Leslie Tompkins, who was also attending the opera, quickly provided medical assistance to Catwoman. As Harley made her escape, Thomas continued to pursue her, determined to retrieve the necklace. Batman followed closely behind, but when he finally caught up, he stumbled upon a horrific scene. Thomas Elliot lay dead, shot in the chest, and standing over him was the Joker, grinning wickedly with a gun in hand. Seeing his archenemy take the life of someone close to him yet again caused Batman to snap. He unleashed his fury on the Joker, relentlessly beating him while memories of the Joker's past crimes flooded his mind. Batman first recalled Barbara Gordon, whom the Joker shot and paralyzed, robbing her of her role as Batgirl, a career she loved. The Joker also killed Barbara's mother, Sarah Essen, and Batman bitterly thought that he should have ended the Joker's life right then and there. But the memory that hurt the most was the loss of Jason Todd, the second Robin. The Joker brutally murdered Jason and then escaped justice through legal loopholes. As Batman pummeled his archenemy, the Joker did something out of character. He pleaded for Batman to stop, insisting that he was innocent of Thomas Elliot's murder. Despite the Joker's unusual pleas, Batman ignored him, continuing the brutal assault. Harley Quinn tried to intervene, but Batman easily overpowered her. Surprisingly, Catwoman stepped in, trying to stop Batman from doing something he would regret for the rest of his life. She reminded him that, if the roles were reversed, he would try to stop her too. But Batman, consumed by rage, wouldn't listen. He immobilized Catwoman by aggravating the wound Harley had inflicted earlier, fearing the Joker might use her to hurt him even more. Determined to end the Joker's life, Batman declared that it would happen by his hands. But just as he was about to deliver the fatal blow, someone arrived and pointed a gun at him. This person fired two warning shots before aiming the gun at Batman's head. The figure was revealed to be Jim Gordon, who was no longer a police officer at this point in the story. Gordon used their friendship to try and reason with Batman, emphasizing the importance of being a role model and how Batman's no-kill rule was what set him apart from the criminals he fought. Batman, overwhelmed by grief and anger, expected Gordon to understand his pain. But Gordon stood firm, insisting that they couldn't give in to revenge despite all the suffering the Joker had caused. He wouldn't allow Batman to destroy his own life over this. Gordon's words finally got through to Batman, who stopped his attack. The Joker was later imprisoned and transferred to Arkham, where he continued to assert his innocence. Batman eventually discovered that the Joker had been telling the truth. Thomas Elliot's supposed death was the work of a new villain, who had been tormenting Batman in an attempt to break him.